Do you want to know more about detailing and weathering locomotives? Why don't you stick around and watch this segment, see how we do on a Mayan scale model rare with this AR secondary. <laughs> Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey, Conrad Allen and Scale. Welcome back to the Locomotive Shop. So this time in the Locomotive Shop, we're going to be working on some Atlas SD60s. So I have a couple, I have two SD60s on the roster. One needs some work and another one needs a, a decoder. So I'm going to sit down and walk you through that process and show you how we get it up and running for the layout. So Conrail's SD60s, uh, what you first need to know is that the SD60 was produced by the Electromotive Division uh, between 1984 and 1995. It produced 3,800 horsepower and was a six axle locomotive. And this was a follow on to the SD50 and it had the new prime mover, which was a 710G3A. So Conrail had 28 of these units. Uh, three of them were the uh, EMD demo units that they had purchased. The, uh, the other 25 were new off the production line. Um, so I have two of them. Uh, 6848, uh, you may recognize that unit. That was a unit that I did with uh, YouTube Model Builders. Um, I did this unit and I installed a Digitrack sound decoder. Um, so let's talk about that. So the Digitrack sound decoder, uh, it, I really don't like it. I, I just, I don't know where to begin. Uh, my major problem with the decoder is that when you hit a dead spot or a dirty spot, uh, the unit stops, the board resets, the, you hear the uh, unit restart, and then it continues on in its way. Where, as you, you've noticed the, uh, the ESU products that I've used, you know, they kind of just hesitate a little bit and then it continues right on where it left off. So, uh, yeah, that's the major thing that just drives me bananas about this Digitrax decoder, and I really don't like it. And the sound quality compared to ESUs is, is not that great either, because they don't have the library that ESU has to upload the different versions of the different motors, and, and you know, so it's got to go. It's just driving me bananas. So I would love to show you uh, how it oper operates and what it looks like, but I've already ripped the board out of the locomotive because I was trying to work on it. I just got so frustrated. So what I'm doing with 6848 is... I'm taking a step back and going to a Digitrax uh, non-sound decoder. So um, when I don't use a sound decoder, um, you know, I'm using Digitrax. They make a great decoder. Um, the prices are coming way down. Uh, they're very inexpensive at this time, and, but they have a lot of functionality. Uh, you can do a lot with them with effects and uh, with the lights and you know, Rule 17 lighting. And, you know, it's, it's a great decoder. It runs uh, very good. Um, so that's why I'm going to stick with the Digitrax. And it's also one of the drop-in board, and it goes right into the, uh, the Atlas frame. The other unit, 6844, is a second-hand unit that I just purchased recently. Uh, I wanted to have a, a kind of a mate for a 6848. Um, and they also, these two also, they're very, very similar to the Atlas SD50s in the way they run because the, the, the chassis underneath the shell is exactly the same. So this way I can kind of mix and match the, the 60s and the 50s and because uh, they're standard cabs and they'll run really good together. So 6844 uh, it needs a little detail work and we're going to do a light weathering and uh, we'll put in the Digitrax board. Now the big thing for this uh, month is that I'm going to take you and walk you through the steps with JMRI of how to program a brand new decoder. So you can kind of get that different look and see how to use JMRI to program instead of just building those roster files like I've been doing. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll cover a lot this time. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's get to work because we got a lot to do. All right. So here we are getting started with 6848. As you can see, that's already in pieces because I was trying to work on it and I ripped out that Digitrax soundboard. And there it is right there, going in the junk pile. Um, so this is a pretty straightforward install. We're using the Digitrax uh, DN163A1. And it's a fairly straightforward uh, install. It's just a drop-in board and uh, you're all ready to go. to do anything else to this unit. I like the weathering job on it and the detail work is good so we're just going to leave the rest of it alone. So I don't know what happened 
happened sometime along when they released the new boards, uh, Ditch Tracks changed their install process. It used to be that you put the motor tabs up against those brass pieces on the bottom of the decoder. But now with the new install procedure, they want you to actually thread them through the holes. So it's very tedious. So it works best when you disassemble the whole unit and then put it in as the fashion of doing now. And, uh, otherwise, you, you can't get those tabs through those holes. There we go, so I'm just going to tighten up the screws and button up this chassis and uh, we'll be ready to start on the next unit. tab sticking through the board. So that wraps this unit up. Okay, so here we are getting started on 6844. So like I said, this is a second-hand unit. I bought it used off of uh, InScale yard sale. Uh, ripped out the uh, lighting board. Um, also the unit, it looked like it had some wear on it. Uh, it I cleaned up some of the gears. Uh, there was a lot of gunk and, and debris in there. Um, it looked like somebody had tried to do some detail work with the grills and all that stuff, but so it's a little too heavy for my liking, so I have to adjust that. So the only detail that I'm going to add to the shell is going to be the cab signal box. Uh, so I'm just going to install that there. I've already gone ahead and taken the time to change out the couplers uh, to uh, 1050 universal couplers. And um, also I've masked off the windows. Um, you know, early on when I started doing my weathering, I really didn't care. It just sprayed right over the, the window glazing. Uh, but in lately, I've it's become a pet peeve of mine is, you know, getting the weathering on the window. So I always take the time now to mask off the windows so they get the nice crystal clear look because, you know, no crew is going to want to take a unit out on the road when the windows are so dirty that they can't even see out. So that's my reasoning behind it. Okay, so now we're moving into the spray booth. Uh, we're going to spray some Monoflex sand diluted down with two drops of isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I went ahead and had to do the uh, FRA classification lights just to brighten them up a little bit with some red light, uh, paint. And now I'm just going to concentrate on dulling down those grills. Um, see, when I do the grill work, I like to use the paint uh, diluted down a little so it gives a little translucent effect so you can still see that blue paint. But I just feel that the person that did this it was a little too thick so I'm just going to concentrate on those areas to try and fade them in. At this point here you can see me uh, airbrushing the trucks. I've kind of gone with this process of just airbrushing them right on the chassis and not taking them apart because I find they become problematic when you disassemble them, paint them and reassemble. And so far over the last four or five locomotives uh, I have had good success with doing it in this fashion. Alright, now I'm going to come in here with some Bragdon weathering powders and just do a very light 
uh, work and just try and tie everything together and make it all look uniform and then I'm going to seal it up with tester's dull coat just to protect the uh, the shell because from rubbing off over handling over time Okay, so now I'm going to pull the masking off the windows and reassemble the unit and uh, get it ready for programming. Okay, so we're going to show you how to program a locomotive using JMRI. So, first thing, I have uh, 6848 on the, lo um, on the programming track. Make sure you select programming track, and we're going to click New Loco. We need to scroll down and find our decoder, and it's a Digitrax. Take me a minute to find it. Here we go, right here. All right, here, so I found my, my decoder, uh, DN163A1. I'm going to select that. A new loco entry is going to be Conrail SD60 number 6848. We want to use the long address 6848. So now I'm going to click to open Comprehensive Programmer. Road name is Conrail. Road number is 6848 Atlas SD60. I'm going to come over here to the Basic tab. We've done long address 6848. It's using the extended version. So that's got to use uh, CV16 and 17. Okay, so we're going to try something on this one. I'm going to select the Rural 17 dimmable light on forward and rear. All right. So now I'm going to click on Write All Sheets. And that'll do two things. It'll program the decoder and it'll enter into JMRI for us. All right, and it's done programming. And there it is right there. So I need to open the labels and media on this unit because I want to put my picture in there. And we'll drop it in. There we go. Now we'll save it to the roster. And that's it. Programming is done.
So let me go take it and uh, give a quick test run. Okay, so the Rule 17 dimmable headlight, I had to play around with the settings to get it right. And this is what you should do. Um, these two blocks here need to be selected for Rule 17 dimmable light. And then spe then for the behavior rule, it has to be the special logic for forward ditch light or Rule 17 dimming on both. Then you also have to select it down here for your function button, Rule 17 and dimmable. So what will happen now is both headlights are on and then when you in the direction you're traveling if you hit F4 it'll dim the light. Um, so and that seems to work. I like it. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Probably something that I'm missing or maybe somebody knows something that I'm not doing right. Uh, if so just uh, put something up in the comments but uh, looks like it's working the way I want it for right now. And if you notice here, I'm programming on the main. I took it out for its test run. And so all you got to do is come back in here to JMRI, select programming from the main, and you can change your CVs on the main. You don't have to go back to the programming track. That's the beauty of having the JMRI system. And uh, once you make your changes, you just write changes on sheet. You don't have to write the whole thing again. So, all right. Okay, so let's do 6844. So uh, we got the locomotive on the programming track, and we're going to hit New Loco. We're going to select our decoder, DN163A1. Do our entry Conrail SD sixty number six eight four four. We're going to use our long address six eight four four. And we're going to open Comprehensive Programmer. Road name is Conrail. 68 typo 6844 manufacturer atlas model st60 we're going to go over here to our lights we're going to select rule 17 dimmable headlight we want special logic for rule 17 Whoop. No, I don't want to draw a light. Special logic. And then function for effect generated. Roll 17. And special effect. Okay. I don't want to make any other changes at this time, so we're going to go ahead and write all sheets. Okay, and it is done. So we'll close, save and close. We'll come down to our roster here, and there's 6848, and here's 6844. Now, I can't do a um, picture right now because I still I want to get a finished picture after the, we do the weathering. So uh, let me take the uh, unit out for a test to make sure that the program, programming is good, and then we'll go to the spray booth and do some uh, quick weathering on it. All right, everyone, so there you go, uh, ST60s. Yeah, so uh, got rid of the old uh, Digitrax soundboard. Um, I just went with standard uh, Digitrax uh, decoders. Uh, also picked up the second uh, ST60, so this way I can have them um, uh, another unit for running on the road. I'm very happy with the way they came out. They're looking really good. They run really good, too, so uh, going to be a great addition to the fleet. So what I plan on doing is probably mixing and matching those with the ST50s because they run really good together. And as you can tell from the haircut, uh, yeah, wrapping this video up, uh, this video is taking a long time to produce, but uh, yeah, it's all done now, and uh, we're going to get this ready uh, to go up on the channel for the locomotive shop. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed following along. Uh, also, you know, I took you step by step through on uh, programming with JMRI. Um, I hope you guys uh, find that helpful, and uh, please leave me your comments and tell me what you think. All right, so that's going to put a wrap on this uh, locomotive shop. So. Uh, 
If you're seeing this for the first time, you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the channel because we're always producing great free content like this. And if you haven't done so already, please check out our Facebook page and Instagram account. And otherwise, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Locomotive Shop.